What happened at this condo building in Victoria is raising questions about the BC government's ability to live up to affordable housing promises. It's a total mess. The province provided a $53 million low interest loan to the developer of Vivid Condominiums. The goal? Those savings would be passed on to qualified buyers like Brady Quaid. Household income? Less than 150 grand. Doesn't own any other properties. He promised to live in his one bedroom condo for at least two years, no rentals. He bought the place for just over $308,000. That's below market. There was a sense of needing to be honest and truthful that I, I did fully meet those requirements. And there was no part of me that was looking to game the system. But BC Housing says some of his neighbours were. It launched 13 lawsuits against buyers it alleges didn't even move in. Among them, a retiree who owns a $1.7 million home. A couple owning five properties worth more than $3.2 million. Another owning two condominiums and a company that owns or operates nine other properties. They weren't able to flag that people had multiple properties in a simple purchase transaction where a simple land title search uh, connected to these people's names uh, would, have, would have discovered that. BC Housing is also suing this real estate agent who it says bought a unit for herself, didn't live in it and made 53 grand in commission selling to others, nearly all of whom the government now says shouldn't have qualified. She denies the allegations and didn't return calls from CBC. BC Housing says the buyers were vetted by the developer and a third party then audited by government. Uh, it's important to note that anyone that tries to uh, use uh, schemes to try to find ways to take affordable housing that's meant for people who are struggling uh, will get caught and in this case they were. BC Housing is seeking punitive damages from the defendants as a deterrent. The developer charred developments would not comment while the cases are before the courts. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Vancouver. Our Jason Proctor broke this story and he joins us. Jason, how did this happen? Well, Dan, you know, a big question people have been asking is about well, where is the due diligence here? BC Housing told me today that it was up to the developer to screen buyers uh, at the time of purchase at Vivid and that they appointed a third party to monitor that uh, uh, compliance uh, and to make sure that people lived up to the terms of this covenant which these 13 people are accused of violating uh, when they bought uh, into the unit through the through the affordable home uh, ownership program. So there are 13 civil lawsuits. What about criminal charges? They, they, they aren't usually laid in these situations, right? He you know, that's an interesting question. It is one I always get asked when we do these stories um, because, you know, you hear about these instances of people lying and you never hear any kind of consequence along those uh, lines. I actually got a call today from the general counsel for the uh, Notaries Public uh, Society of BC. Those are the people you might go to when you're taking out a mortgage, have to sign a declaration in front of them. He pointed out to me that lying on a statutory declaration is actually a criminal offence under the criminal code. And he said, you know, maybe it's time in one of these kind of cases where somebody actually gets punished as a way of sending a message to people that, you know, in this kind of thing, your word is your bond. And, and you've also learned BC's real estate regulator has gotten some complaints about this. What, what, what's there? Yeah, I called the uh, BC Financial Services Authority. They oversee uh, real estate agents in this province. Uh, they told me that they are now aware of uh, allegations against a real estate agent here who was sued. Uh, she allegedly uh, got $53,000 in commissions associated with the sale of many of the, the, the purchases uh, which we've seen in these uh, uh, lawsuits. Um, and they told me that they're going to basically look and see whether or not there are any potential violations of the Real Estate Act here. And we'll, and we'll see what comes after that. Jason Proctor, thanks very much. Thank you.